Today, my wife and I are visiting at Colonial Williamsburg, an amazing living history museum in Virginia that tells the early part of America's enduring story. Come along with me and my wife as we explore a history buff's paradise. That's coming up next. We have our initials engraved on these things, so it looks like our money that gets lost or stolen, whereas this looks like everybody's gets lost or stolen. And people understand that, you know, you're wearing your cash in the latest London fashion. This wasn't considered rude. This was the polite way to display wealth and good taste if you had it. But when you needed the money back, every silversmith we've seen was advertising that they'd pay the highest price for your old silver and gold. It was our best source for that raw material. So Mr. Craig, who's running this shop in the 18th century, is one of several precious metal workers in town, but he is a London-trained jeweler, so he is mostly making what we call small work, lots of jewelry and spoons and good stuff, and he is going to uh, be setting stones as well, um, and that is a little bit different than most of the other tradespeople in silver and gold. So. A lot of folks might, uh, especially back in the industrial areas of London and Sheffield and Birmingham, um, even in bigger areas in the colonies like Philadelphia or Charleston, we're going to see a little more hollow wear being produced, the big stuff, right? But the price difference is staggering. Something like a plain silver finger ring is about maybe a shilling. It's about half a day's pay for a private in the Continental Army. That coffee pot up there is about a year's wages for a middle class worker. 18th century. It's a huge amount of cash. All right. um, so most people wouldn't even see that thing back then, much less own it. That's the reality. It doesn't mean that you're not having coffee if you don't have that silver coffee pot. It just means you're not serving people coffee out of a year's wages. That's it. All right. So there are lots of different ways we can go about this. Master sitting down in the back. He's working on some finger rings as well. He has got them already in the finished ring shape and is basically doing a little bit of filing and cleanup, taking off any rough edges, uh, making sure that they've got, you know, they've got that, that nice finished look to them before the final polishing. And polishing is abrasion. If you've ever sanded wood, you know the joy of polishing. Taking very finely ground stone powder, mixing it with oil or water to make a paste, putting it on a rag and doing a lot of this until we've got scratches the human eye can't see. That's all polishing. But there's a lot of the work in here that is removal work, right? Trimming, filing, and polishing, all of that takes silver off. And up to an amount that we agree on, that's our price. So when you came in with that Spanish mill dollar and said, hey, I want a teaspoon or I want a brooch, we're going to say, all right, I've got to keep this much of your money. And usually for little stuff like this, it's anywhere up to maybe about one-third of your cash to turn the other two-thirds into the piece. 
you didn't like that price, you were not obligated to it. Take your cash out the door, go to any of our competitors, right? But that was a decent price. So if you went with it, I'd be melting down the whole coin and making the piece. And it's in that trimming, filing, and polishing that that one third comes off in the form of scrap. And even the scrap that's infinitesimal, right? The, the, the dust from polishing, the sawdust from, pol from filing and sawing. If you take a look back here, look around the corners of the, uh, of the counter, you'll see that we've got a big wooden waffle on the floor back here, it's a big grid. That grid is something that we see directly out of engravings of silver shops from the time period. Um, and basically, it's there to catch the silver dust, right? It keeps us from tracking it out on our feet. And every year, we can move the furniture, pick up the grids, sweep up everything that's down there, and refine the silver back out of it and use it again. Now, last time we sent it off, a few years back, there was over 763 bucks on the floor, all right? So it's worth it. You just have to let it accumulate. It's not worth it to sweep up a day's worth or a week's worth or a month's worth. You've got to let it build up. Most of the time, we catch a lot of this, though, in our aprons at our bench. So Master's working at his bench back there. He's got that apron, what's called a lemma claw, attached to his bench. When we sit down to work, we put the neck loop over and it makes a pocket. And it catches everything right there. So we don't have to worry about sweeping as much of it up off the floor. Okay. Take a look around. Ask us questions. If you've got them, I'm happy to answer those for you while we're working. But today, we make and sell this stuff just like we did back then. And today, we're here to educate people about it, too. I'm not too worried about telling you some of our trade secrets. Back then, if you wanted to know my trade secrets, I'm not interested in talking to you. And that's how we protect our living. Well, that's a wrap for this Colonial Williamsburg video. I hope you really enjoyed it, getting to see another part of this amazing Living History Museum. If you like this sort of stuff, check out my other videos. Check out colonialwilliamsburg.org to plan your own visit here because it's so much co cooler in real life than it is on film. Till next time, this is History Buff, TN Photobug signing out. I'm having a blast with the past.